The law has always been concerned with uh, what the philosophers call the mind-body problem. In other words, the law is concerned with not just what people do, but why they do it. And um, neuroscience has developed to the point where it is able to analyze that very central problem in the law from the standpoint of how the brain functions. It's really a tremendous uh, forward leap uh, in terms of uh, its implications for the legal system. Um, the legal system tends to be all or nothing in terms of for example, saying that someone who commits an intentional killing goes away forever. Someone who commits an accidental killing doesn't su usually suffer any punishment, may have to pay damages, but that would be about it. Um, neuroscience suggests that there are many in between states and that the whole issue is far more complicated than anything that the legal system has uh, regarded as the standard up to now. Now having said that, neuroscience is itself um, still developing and uh, to transfer the insights and the findings of neuroscience to the legal system requires a great deal of very careful scrutiny, very rigorous analysis. Um, 20 years ago, neuroscience didn't have the findings that would implicate the legal system. Now they have findings that are sufficiently well developed that we can consider them for their implications for the legal system. But we also have to separate the wheat from the chaff. And what is so exciting about this project is that the scientists involved and the law professors involved are of such a high quality that you can make a systematic analysis of the implications of neuroscience for the legal profession and hope to have some real impact.